Hello everyone, in this video we're going to go over evolution part 1, Lamarck versus Darwin. So we're going to first start with Lamarck, question number 2, how did Lamarck pr propose that species evolve? There are three things that Lamarck pr proposed, there are many things that Lamarck proposed, but there were only three that we covered um, in class. The first one is called um, organisms change over time, and you know that this is true, right? Um, whether it's during the, you know, whether it's genetically, there, there are changes that could happen to a person or any um, animal during its lifetime that's coded by the gene. But there's also the environment that affects how uh, this organism is going to look like. So this is, this is fine. This is good. And then he also said um, there is inheritance of acquired trait. So the typical example that we gave was um, the giraffe. And according to Lamarck, um, during the giraffe's lifetime, there, there's, well, first off, there's variation within the population, meaning there are short giraffes and there are tall giraffes. Before these different types of giraffes, some of them uh, could stretch their necks longer to reach the trees that are taller. This is what Lamarck um, proposed. And then these will be called acquired traits because these are traits that the giraffes weren't born with, um, and those are traits that developed during the giraffe's lifetime. And according to Lamarck, these acquired traits um, can be passed on to the next generation. And that's how, over time, giraffes evolved with longer necks because they stretch and stretch and stretch, and those individuals with longer necks were able to pass on their genes. So you can give examples that support uh, this theory, mm, uh, such as if a mutation uh, so if you were to have a mutation in uh, the gametes, or uh, or we call a germline mutation, those kind of mutations are acquired traits because uh, you weren't born with it. However, those acquired traits, or it's not exactly a trait, you can't really see it, but um, it's close enough. But those acquired characteristics can be passed on to the next generation. However, um, so you can also give examples that do not support this inheritance acquired trait statement, right? So what tells us that this statement is incorrect? So you can give the example of hair, right? So if you were to dye your hair and, uh, you know, somebody dyes her or his hair and that trait will not be passed on to the next generation. Now, our third, um, our third statement by Lamarck is called use or disuse. So the use or disuse um, theory states that if an organism is using a certain part of his body or a certain characteristic, then that trait will stay and continue to be passed on to the next generation. However, if there are traits that are not being used, then those traits will disappear. So a way to support, um, you know, think about what Lamarck could have looked at and, and think that this is right. So you could say, that people don't have tails because we don't use tails. That's why we don't have tails, right? So, right? No, not right. Um, but this, this is this made sense at the time. People did people didn't know about genes even. So, you know, we look at human beings without tails, and we think we don't have tails because we weren't using it. Um, this is it's true to a certain degree, but really, it's not. That's not how evolution works. So. Um, um, you can give an example explaining how it actually works. So how it actually works is that we have population of, you know, human ancestors, or maybe they weren't so human yet. But they had, some had tails and some didn't have tails, but then it just, it turned out that the ones that survived and reproduced based on whatever reason, whether it's natural selection, whether it's genetic drift, if you forgot what genetic drift is, we'll talk about that in the next video. Um, but the, the end result is that only the ones that didn't have tails survived and reproduced uh, more than the ones that did have tails. So over, over time, the human population or the human ancestor population had more individuals without tails, and now we don't have tails. It's not because we're not using it. It's, you know, for either the reason of natural selection, well, so far you only know those two reasons, or um, genetic drift, which is chance events, just random events that happen, just turn out that the ones without tails got to survive and reproduce, and, and then the result is we don't have tails. It's not because we're not using it, okay? 
Um, what else? You could also say, I mean, there's people saying this, if, if you were to not use your pinky ever, if you tie these two fingers together, you will not lose your pinky um, during your lifetime. All right, um, continue on talking about Darwin. So we look at the three Lamarck theories. Um, but how about Darwin? We watched this cool video. Oh, um, that's, our, that's our cool video right here. All right, here it is. Here's our cool video on four things um, that Darwin, well, Darwin first made a bunch of observations. So let's, let's first talk about that. So here we have, oh, there, there it is. It's number three right here. So we watched the video of Darwin exploring the world and making observations um, so that he ended up coming up with the theory of evolution, even though that was not his intention. Um, during his travel, according to the video. So what did Darwin notice when he traveled around the world? First off, there are similarities and differences between organisms he observed, right? So when he was on the HM, HMS Beagle, I don't know, um, the ship, he went around you know, the world and he saw a lot of different species, but they, he saw birds and he saw tortoise and tortoises and you know other types of organisms and he saw that there are a lot of similarities and differences right that makes sense that's something that uh, Darwin saw and we can all see it if you just look around the room if you just look anywhere you see similarities right we're all human beings however there are a lot of differences for example I'm not you and you're not me and we look very different and then the second thing that he observed is that um, well, when he was on the Galapagos Island, right, there were, there were these bunch of little tiny islands, not, not exactly tiny, um, these islands along the side of the, the South America, along the coast of the South America. Um, and he saw that there were similar species, species that looked similar to each other among these islands and in South America. So what he came up with was that organisms often have traits that allow them to better survive in the distinct environment they live in. What does that mean? So we have these little islands and we have the, the South America coast, a, a coastline, and these similar species, they have their similarities because they all came from the same common ancestor. Common ancestor means it's an ancestor that um, you know gave rise to all the different species. So that common ancestor allowed the different species to be similar. However, uh, since those different species are living in different environment, although originally they weren't different species yet, right? Originally they were just, you know, migration allowed the South American finches, for example, move to these Galapagos Islands. Um, however, because the environment is different at every island, the, the survival of the fittest or natural selection process will be different. So then the result is for different islands, fitness means differently. Right, so the result is some some get to live and pass on their genes, and some don't. And I hope you understand what that means. So we will find a good picture. Okay, so here it is. We have South America and Galapagos Island, right? So we have finches that originally migrated from South America to the Galapagos Island, but because the environment is different at different islands the selection process, the natural selection process will be different, right? So if on one island, uh, it might be more fit for the finches to have smaller beaks because there are only smaller seas around. However, on some of the other islands, uh, having bigger beaks, larger beaks will be more fit because uh, there are only seas that are larger, right? So over time on these islands, uh, there will be more of the smaller beak finches surviving and reproducing and they become their own species, and then the larger beef finches will become their own species at other islands. Okay, the next one. Um, so he observed that the finches living on different islands of the Galapagos Island had different beak shapes and deep beak depth. So beak shape is, you know, the shape of the beaks. Beak depth means like how, how wide it is. Okay, so if you have wider beaks, you can crack open, crack open larger seeds. Now, the last one is... Uh, those species, those finches, had similar beaks to each other. So the Galapagos Island finches are similar to each other, and they're similar to the mainland South America. So this is the mainland. Okay? So these are the observations. And then from these observations, Darwin made uh, some theories. So, or 
Oh, here it is. Here are the four theories that he came up with. Okay. So, oh, it's, it's, uh, I'm sorry about the circle. Um, come on. All right, here we go. This is better. So the first one is individuals within a population differ, right? We already know this if you look at the, the thumbnail right here. So we have these giraffes. It's red right there. We have these giraffes. There, some, some of them are taller, or some of them are shorter. If you look at any type of organism um, at all, there will be individuals within a population that are different from each other. And then the second part that's important is that you know, we have a lot of differences between us, but some of those differences will be passed on to the offspring and some won't. If those are differences originated in the, in the genes and they happen to uh, also be in the genes of our gametes, then those will be passed on to the offspring. But if not, they will not. So some of the differences will be passed on from parents to, to offsprings. Third one is some individuals are more successful at surviving and reproducing than others. So we have all these giraffes, tall and short. Some of the genes can be passed on to the next, next generation. But some individuals, in this case, the taller giraffes, are more successful at surviving and reproducing than the shorter giraffes. And this su success rate is determined by the environment. That's why we call it natural selection. The nature is selecting it, although it's not an active process of nature, you know, picking and choosing. But the end result is if the environment only has taller trees, only the individuals that are taller can survive and reproduce and, um, you know, better as surviving and reproducing than the shorter giraffes. And then the last one is the successful individuals succeed because of variant traits they have inherited, right? So these long-like traits um, is coded in the genes. That's why they have it in the first place. And then these long-like giraffes can also pass on those genes because uh, it's in the gametes of the giraffes. Now we can go over the process of evolution one more time. Well, process of natural selection in the means of what did I just say? <laughs> process of evolution in the means of natural selection um, right now. So here's how this works. We first start with mutations. Mutations is what allows variations to happen in the first place. And then the next one is uh, overpopulation, prediction, and competition, um, you know, happen within the population, right? So first you have overpopulation, so you have way more of the individuals within the population than the environment can support. And then um, there are predators, uh, you know, that's preying on the population and there's competition between individuals for the lack of food and resources and mates. So then the result is the result is that not all the individuals are going to survive and reproduce and pass on their genes. Only the individuals that are the most fit in the environment get to survive and reproduce and pass on their genes and the alleles of the genes more often or more successfully than the other ones that are less fit. Okay, so you can call this natural selection and the survival of the fittest. Only the most fit individuals can survive, right? You have to stay alive first. That's, that's everybody's goal. And then reproduce. And then while you're reproducing, the alleles of your genes get to pass on to the next generation. And you're only able to do that um, in the means of natural selection if you're the most fit. And then the result is over time, there's a change in allele frequencies in the population, or even a change in not just allele frequencies, but also characteristics, you know, distributions and frequencies um, and within the population, and we call that evolution. And the